PLDC Assignment Part 2 Java Generics These are our group members. The content is the first one is introduction, second one is defining simple generics, third one is writing generic classes, fourth one is generics and subtyping, fifth one is writing generic methods, sixth one is wildcards, seventh one is bound in the parameterized types, the final one is the conclusion. The introduction. JDK 1.5 introduced several extensions to the Java programming language. One of these is the introduction of generics. Generics allow you to abstract over types. The most common examples are container types, such as those in the collection hierarchy. It means generics allows application to create classes and objects that can operate on any defined types. Defining simple generics. Here is a simple example without generics. The cast on line 3 is slightly annoying. Typically, the programmer knows what kind of data has been placed into a particular list. However, the cast is essential. The compiler can only guarantee that an object will be returned by the iterator. To ensure the assignment to a variable of type integer is safe to type, the cast is required. Of course, the cast not only introduces clutter, it also introduces the possibility of a runtime error, since the programmer might be mistaken. Core idea behind the generic is uh, what if, prog if programmers could actually express their intent and mark a list as being restricted to contain a particular data type. Advantage in generics is it improves readability and robustness in the large programs. Here is the same example with generics. Notice the type declaration for the variable myInt list. It, it specifies that this is not just an arbitrary list but a list of integer. Written list integer, we say that list is a generic interface that takes a type parameter, in this case integer. We also specify a type parameter when creating the list object. The other thing to pay attention to it is it, it that the cast is gone on line number 3. Now, you might think that all we have accomplished is to move the clutter around. Instead of a cast to integer on line 3, we have integer as the type parameter on line number 1. However, there is a very big difference here. The compiler can now check the type correctness of the program at compile time. When he say that my int list is declared with type list integer, this tells some tells us something about the variable my int list, which holds true whatever and whenever it is used, and the compiler will guarantee it. In construct, the cast tells us something the programmer thinks it true at a single point in the code. This is a more complex example. As mentioned before, generics programs enables classes and methods to operate on well-defined parametric types, allowing clients and substitute a suitable Java type at the compile time. This prevents unnecessary casting being done in the application code and to prevent any wrong data type being used. To make things clear, consider the second example. In here, code populates a map kid with a mobile phone for a person name. The next pieces of code try to iterate over the map, thereby printing the data within it. Look at the cast down at line A, B and C. Here is the problem arises in previous code. So we find two major disadvantages in the older code 
code compiler compiled with Java 1.5 compiler or the before. The one is the need to have a skirt cast that is being spread across the code. The other thing is that there is no procedural mechanism through which we can prevent wrong data type being added to the above collection.